serve dishes here with the average guys. Get some questions about, oh, I did remind me, you're just average, you're just average. Well, here's the thing, guys. The things we're doing, you can do too. And I'm not trying to show you how or tell you what to do. It's just I show you things that we do and we're just ordinary, typical people. And so what's really cool about this is I work with another guy. He's a motivational speaker and uh, he talks a lot about what's your excellence. What's your excellence? And I really like to think that our uh, excellence here is what we're showing you, but we call it average because it's what we do every day. And when it becomes routine and your excellence becomes routine, that becomes your average. Your average is excellence. I know that might not make sense to you, but hey, it's how we roll. It's how we do it. So uh, just tune it in here. Um, we got another epoxy cutting board coming up and keep in mind, we've got... Um, the idea of this big grandiose dinner table that we want to put together and so it's building these projects putting them together this one you're about to see was a really junky piece of walnut and I ended up buying this walnut, probably overpaid for it, but you know what? It, it's gonna turn out great. And I'm gonna make a serving platter with it. It's gonna have a vinyl inlay, a clear coat surface, and some handles to make a pretty cool serving platter. And uh, I just want you to stay tuned. Let's see how it looks here. Okay, syrup dishes. Hey there, so I've got this uh, beat up old piece of walnut that we've planed out and we've ripped it down the center and it's going to make a pretty great uh, serving platter or charcuterie board here. Um, and so if you've watched our other videos, you've noticed that we've used some particle board and tuck tape to make the mold to be able to pour some epoxy down in these. We've got a couple other boards here that we're going to use to make a noodle board and they're quite a bit bigger. And I wanted to try the melamine instead of particle board and tuck tape because it removes one step. And that step is just layering the board and tape. I just don't have to do it. Now, uh, particle board and tuck tape is cheaper than the melamine, but not by much. Um, one board is probably a difference of seven, eight bucks. Um, and so it does save you a little bit, especially if you have a lot of projects going on. But I wanna just show you how we're measuring this out and cutting these. So let's go ahead and get started. You have seen us cut this melamine and our next steps here will be to screw this in square, screw in the other side and then we'll silicone all the edges and then we will let that dry for 24 hours before we pour our epoxy. And so getting that good and tight and good and sealed so you don't have any leaks is the next step. Let's take a look at that. Welcome back. So we've got some square clamps. We've got some caulking. Unfortunately, it's clear caulking, but uh, is what it is. We've got our drill and some star drive screws. We've also got a bit to recess those screws in. Uh, we'll be caulking the heck out of this as we put it together, uh, using the clamps to keep it square. We'll put the border together on the mold, then we'll lay the base on there, then we'll recalk it all, and then we'll set that up to dry for 24 hours. Let's check that out. There you go. So I've got two molds here curing with the caulking in there. I'm really hoping that this one here 
is set up just right. You can see my workspace is at 58. It's because I keep my wine nice and cool. I love wine. Uh, we'll do some videos on that another time. Uh, but we're going to get this up to 72. Don't worry, we're not going to ruin the wine. And then we're going to pour some uh, epoxy down it. So we're really looking at a cool inlay on this one, uh, doing a Wyoming theme here. So stay tuned. We're going to get this going. So for this particular mold, we are going to use this liquid glass, which I have just about 950 to 1,000 milliliters left, which should be plenty for this pour. Length times width times height, that's how you calculate how much should be there. This is an odd shape, so I took two measurements and just roughly estimated. Plus my mold is a little bit bigger and there are some cracks in here. And given this pour, I need about a quarter to an eighth of an inch inch under pour for the special uh, surprise inlay that we're going to be doing on here. So I'm going to measure uh, the two to one pour. The plastic piece is about 600 milliliters and then we're going to add the hardener at about 300 more milliliters to make 900 total and we'll mix this up for three to five minutes before we add in the pigment. I mean, it's simple, right? We mixed up 900 milliliters of yellow and gold epoxy and we poured it down in there. We left it an eighth to a quarter inch low and it's had a full 72 hours to cure. So we've removed the clamps. We've got it out at sitting. Now what we want to be able to do is put a clear coat epoxy over there because we're actually going to inlay a vinyl sticker in there. We'll show you what that is here in a little bit. Uh, but to be able to get epoxy to bond to epoxy, we've got to do something with that surface. And epoxy as it cures creates this uh, waxy cure layer. You can't really see it or really feel it but it's there it's present and so you need to use some alcohol and uh, sanding to create a surface that it can bond to and so I'm going to take sandpaper um, because it's recessed and I don't want to mess up the live edge I'll be using my hand uh, just to sand with this sandpaper I've got uh, uh, just one of the boards that I use to clamp it down with I'll wrap the paper around just do a light sanding over that create a white surface area so let's show you that sanding uh, then we'll do the vinyl inlay and then we'll show you the thin set epoxy we're going to pour over that and then we'll move into the complete finishing stages of this so hang in there stay tuned syrup dishes here making an epoxy serving board a lot of fun
All right, so we've got our surface plane down here. Um, I did run this through the planer instead of the router. Now the router won't chip the surface as much, but you still get grooves in your board. This epoxy has chipped a bit, but I used that router to just be a little more precise with the measurements to save some of the wood. So we're gonna go ahead and sand this down somewhere in the vicinity of 220 or 400. And then our plan is to coat this in epoxy. We will be routing the outer edges as well, just to give it that nice uh, round shape. We use a 1 8 inch router bit for that. Um, we'll have to secure this down in place to do so, but let's take a look at a time lapse of finishing this out. So I needed a way to measure my epoxy because I've run out of my measuring cups that show it in milliliters And so I've just got a soda cup from the gas station and I put out a scale and I've got it teared but I'm gonna go to grams um, and just go to that right now and that's what we're gonna use to measure this so I have sanded down the board right here to 220 grit and I'm going to clear coat the top in epoxy and then come back and finish the bottom and smooth in any holes there. We'll show you a little bit of what that looks like here in a bit. There's the final product. So I just added these awesome oiled bronze handles to it. I didn't show you that process, just drilling a couple holes, measuring, making sure it's right. I did recess the screws in here a bit and I added some rubber feet just to keep it a little bit from scratching this backside surface. I think this backside looks stellar too. Um, if I were to do this project again, there's a couple things I would change. I really wanna find a vacuum pump to get all the air out. You can see this is a little cloudy on the Wyoming, which is backwards because my camera's on reverse right now. And that's just the result of air bubbles, real tiny, tiny, tiny air bubbles from mixing. When I hand mix and thin pour, um, I can get them all out. But this other side, it was just more difficult to do that with. Also, I epoxied the bottom side and I did that after I had done the top. And I laid the top across some uh, framing so that I could epoxy the backside. And that frame uh, had left some marks on this top just because the epoxy had only cured for 24 hours. And to me, that felt rock hard. But sitting on those for a little bit, it just sort of left some dings. So I would either let it cure longer or I would do the backside first and do the top side later. So all in all, I'm real pleased. These aren't something I look to sell or make a profit off. You got to figure I've got a good 15 to 20 hours in this one board here. I've also got probably 70 to 75 bucks by the time you add up epoxy and wood and vinyl and uh, pigment and sandpaper and uh, the handles. It just starts to add up the mold. Uh, remember, we use the melamine board. That all adds up in cost. And so, you know, this, this kind of stuff just to me isn't real profitable, but it's really cool for me uh, to have these share with friends, give, give as gifts because they just turn out great. So real pleased with this project. Stay tuned. I'm, I got some more coming. So hopefully you guys can check that out later. Syrup dishes here. We're average guys. We're just doing excellent things, right? See you soon. <laughs>